Good morning. Welcome back. It's been a while. Uh, finally getting some calls because it is 40 degrees outside here in Florida today. So we're getting some no heat calls. Um, I've already got one scheduled. The other one is, it's not necessarily an emergency no heat call. He, um, it is Veterans Day, so happy Veterans Day to all you veterans out there. We appreciate y'all. But uh, I've talked to this guy for a little while and he has another house and it's like his mother's old house or his old house or something and the, the unit hasn't rained in three years every time he goes by to check on the house or anything because nobody lives there he gets vandalized um so he just kind of gave up on it but now he's ready to spruce it up and just sell it and kind of get rid of it so we're headed we're gonna head over there i'm gonna try to film that for you guys and I'll film this no heat call for you guys. Yeah, so that's uh, right now that's what we got going on. If we get any more in, it might be a late day working into the evening. It gets dark at like five o'clock now. So I didn't get home last night till 6.30. Six um, I had one late call, that was it. Um, and it was uh, a short in the wire causing the contactor to chatter and heat and emergency heat. No, there was a short on the Y wire, so it would work fine until the outdoor heat pump kicked on, and then it would chatter that contactor until it reset the thermostat. He, someone had a 15 amp fuse in it, so it never blew the fuse, and there's no board, so it didn't mess anything else up, no coils or nothing. I don't know how, but um, I did have to replace that one contactor because it's been doing it for so long that it was super pitted. The ohms are high in it, so it has two contactors on that heat kit, the emergency heat electric kit, and uh, I just changed one of them, the one that was bad. But uh, that was done last night. I didn't film any of that. Um, I apologize, but easy call. And I'm just yapping on, but make sure you uh, like and subscribe um, just to help the algorithm, and uh, we'll see you when we get to the job. Here today is popping the fuse he said on this unit so we're probably gonna have to take this panel off I'll take I'll take this one off see if there's any electrical in there and maybe take this one off too electrical is probably all mainly in here I like to double check there's no shorts all right so we got a blonde three amp fuse here We're gonna look for anything burnt since it's happening with the heat. We're gonna look at everything, see what's going on with it. First, I'm gonna get my fuse popper and we'll get it going. So, this Subco one here has been my favorite fuse popper. And we're gonna go back inside, check the thermostat, and uh, we could just have something rubbing. Here, see, everything's working. So the thermostat is kicking on, kicking off, kicking on, kicking off. Like, like it's something instant. So I'm just going to come through here and just look for any shorts. It could be the thermostat. I'm going to test all everything out. We're going to, I'm going to all mount these coils. We're going to test it all out, make sure. Okay, so what I just did is I jumped the emergency heat to that and pop the fuse so we're going to check this now when I pull disconnect power and we're going to all mount these contactors oh. one's for the heat one's for the cool in this situation alright let's test it out alright always check power just in case these disconnects are bypassed. You never know. These have a jumper in the middle. And gray and brown and brown on the side. Okay, let's so open this one out. Let's see what we got.
14.6 on that one. That one right there is bad. This one we've I got. I got 1.6 on this one. This one's bad. All right, we're gonna get it changed out and uh, test it. So the fan noise is way too loud here. But what I did was isolate that one contactor that I thought was bad. So only half the heat strips was working. And that was telling me that the uh, that one contactor was bad. So time to replace. All right, so as replacing this, I always put this in. It's got a loose connection. So we're just going to squeeze this with our needle nose. Give her a little squeeze. You want a nice deep connection because these things, loose connection, they'll get hot, they'll glow, and uh, cause a lot of issues. That's for sure. Put the disconnect back in. Test the system. Fans on. Everything seems to be working. So what I'm doing now is I'll double check the amp roll. This can actually be heat strip for kicking on. We got 16 on that side. And then I'll do the black. Yeah, so we're good to go. So, we'll go get a fuse. We'll put the fuse back in here. And button it up. Alright, we are buttoned up. Fuse is replaced. System is on and running. I'm going to put my tools back in my van. And then we are going to uh, go inside. I'm going to check the temp coming out of the vents. Make sure they're getting adequate airflow. A lot of these modular homes, they uh, duck work will get damaged, which this one's got a really nice setup. So I'm sure it's fine. But always double check and verify before you leave and get a call back. Testing it in cool mode. All right, so I just got back in the van, done with that call. Um, now we gotta head to another call. Then this one hasn't ran in like three years, so I gotta figure out what's going on with it. He said that it has had leak issues in the past, refrigerant leaks. But we are now headed to that call. This one's pretty easy. Um, and yeah, so invoice sent out. We are good to go. He is heating and he is cooling. Um, I double checked cooling just to be sure that it is actually kicking on. It is heated up to 50 degrees already outside. So just wanted to make sure it wants to run in cool mode. I can't necessarily check pressures right now on these temps, but it is cooling. And then put it in heat mode. Heat strips are kicking on. Everything's working fine. So this job's complete. Good to go. Just easy, uh, bad contactor coil. So we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate y'all.
Make sure you like and subscribe. See you on the next one. So I didn't film this one. The homeowner was hanging out with me. Um, but I wanted to let you know the one that I just went to. It uh, it was a bad blower motor on a Nordine unit. And I'm jumping hurdles to get this warranty and get it ordered. So I literally have to drive and give them all this information. Um, the town over at RE Michaels is the distributor. Um, I guess their website and their site and stuff's down. So I got to drive over here, make sure everything's ordered. And then we'll be back at that job to get it fixed. It, uh, it had refrigerant in it. He said it was, it was leaking they multiple issues with that system. And it, it, he literally just hasn't turned it on in three years. When I got there, put the gauges on it, it's 50 degrees outside. And we're looking at 149 PSI just setting, never turned on. So I'm like, well, there's refrigerant in it. I kick it on, kicks on, runs fine. Except for the blower motor doesn't kick on. So I was like, well, we got to get this fixed first before we do anything else. But I found a Schrader core. I had a small leak. I could hear it hissing, so I went ahead and replaced that. I think that's where his leak was the entire time in the history of this. I don't think he's got a leak. I think the uh, valve caps being on it, because I could hear them hiss a little bit when I took them off. I think it being on it probably saved it from leaking out over three years of just sitting and not running. I'm sure if it ran, it might have built up some pressure and leaked out, but it, I think it kind of saved it. So uh, we're headed there now. We're going to get that part ordered and uh, end this video for you guys. So like always, appreciate all you guys, and we'll see you on the next one.